Hi there, Chris Courtney here for New Pragmatic. Thanks for joining me for this short video on creating components with Figma. Regardless of the size of your project, the creation of components will allow you to build and update your project quickly. When you're working on an established product, you'll likely be building your, your designs out of an existing component library like this one. However, if you're starting for a new project from scratch, you're going to need to populate a component library before you can begin enjoying the benefits of components. In this video, we're going to be working with a simple signup screen that's partially done. This is giving us just enough to work with to begin constructing our component library. The first thing I like to do when working on a new project is I like to establish a place for all of my components to reside. I typically do this by creating a new page in Figma and I always call this one components. While you can create components anywhere in your project, having them reside in a single place makes updating and sharing them with other people on your team significantly easier. Before we get started, I want to come back over to our first page and I want to see if we have any styles that have been previously created. As you can see, there are no styles listed here under local styles. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a few at this point in time. All right, and just like that, we've got we've now got some basic styles that are gonna act as the foundation for our comp the components that we're gonna build. With our styles out of the way, we can now create components out of the elements that are currently present. To do this, I'm gonna grab the components that I wanna work with, and I'm gonna take them over to the components page. Now I'm gonna group these into logical pairings and name them, as because as you can see, when I group them, it, it strips away any naming convention, and now it just says group one, group two, you want to give it a specific name that that component is going to now be known as. And we can actually simplify this. We don't actually need username and password. We just need form label. And I wanna make sure that's form label. We will definitely need this link and then this is already grouped because it, it, it has auto layout assigned to it. So this, this button, I'm just gonna call it button. And I'll call it button in active. And then finally we have this element down here. Again, you see, you see that this has a grouping of next again because it is, it is auto layout. I'm just gonna call this button next because it does a little bit of it's a very specific button that resides in a particular place um, and I'm going to group this together and we'll call this uh, keyboard form Okay, now that we've got these basic elements onto our components page, it's time to make them actual components. And to do this, all you need to do is select one of them and come up to the create component icon in the, in the top navigation. And you'll notice that they change in structure. They go from being a type of Figma element to actually turning into the component and they get the diamond designation. Now we have our four basic components. To see these in action, all you have to do is come over to Assets, and you'll now see that these components reside in this left rail. We'll get more into how to organize them a little more appropriately here in just a second. Let's shore up this initial design. When I, when I inherit a design that's already been started, I first go through create, create the components, as we just did, and then I replace all of the elements that are currently here with the component. So I'm gonna come over and kind of come to assets and we have form label. And as you can see, we have form label. I can tell really quickly the difference between form label and user and rectangle here because form label 
is an instance. That's what the empty, the outline of the diamond means. It's an instance of the component. And I can duplicate that again. So I now have a second instance. Now delete away password and rectangle. And now we've basically recreated this. Now we need to replace this information here. So this is now username. And here this is password. You can update instances without it impacting the actual component, which is really nice. If for some reason you need to reset an instance, for example, if I uh, change this fill to a dark blue and I said, oh, I, I don't want that to happen. I could click reset and that would take it back to its original state. Although I would have to come back in here and change this back to username. Now I'm going to replace the rest of the components. While we're here, I'm going to go ahead and grab our keyboard and make a component out of it as well. Anything that we're going to use over and over again, I want to have that as a component. Currently in our local components, I have a lot of items that are just basically hanging out by themselves. But you can organize this rel relatively easily by coming over to components and creating frames. So I'm gonna create a frame. And over here, you don't necessarily need to give it a particular size. What's important is that you give it a name. So in this case, I'm gonna call the this form elements. And I'm gonna grab everything that's related to form and drag it into that page. And I'm gonna create another page I'm just going to duplicate form elements to begin. I'm going to del delete off the form components from that page. I'm going to call this one keyboards. And now I'm going to take keyboard helper and the keyboard and I'm going to place it onto that page. Now we have our assets panel organized into form elements and keyboards. Each only contains the components that are attached to that frame. This is a fairly easy file to keep up with until we start adding instances of each of our components. Let's go ahead and do that now. So now we've expanded our component library to also include the different states for the form elements and buttons that we have. As you can see, what was once a handful of components grows very quickly. That's because you need things like hover states, active states, error states, empty states, so on, for every single component that you're going to create that users are going to interact with. That's why I really like organizing my components into logical groupings so it's easy for you to hand this off to a coworker, to a colleague and allow them to build with you. So with that done, let's build a simple prototype. To do that, I'm gonna duplicate my login page. I'll call this one login entry. I'll name the, the other page login start. I keep saying page, it's really a frame, but you can think of these as frames, use pages, whatever works for you inside of Figma, each one of these is a frame. So now that we've got login entry created, instead of going back and dragging in something from my components, assets, panel, 
and all of that, I can simply switch these out. I can come over to the instance and now I can switch to label entry. And it will retain the overrides that I entered here. So username, I don't have to type that back in. And if I want it to continue this path down, I could say username. I now have success. So I have that example entry. I can type in Chris Courtney here. I can move down here to password, select entry. And then I want, I want to make this a, a successful completion. So I'm just going to give us success. I'm going to enter the dots and then I'll switch this over to but. And now we've got the flow necessary for data entry into this signup form. All we have to do now is connect them together. And to get this started, I'm simply going to come up to the present button on Figma and present our prototype. Now, if I click, I get the entry field, get the password, and I did notice that it jumped just a bit. Nonetheless, I can fix that on the page. I just need to look at the why. So it's 231.68, and it looks like I did move that just a hair. Yeah, I, I must have accidentally clicked it and just moved it just enough. But anytime you're creating these components, I want your I want your examples to be locked up, super tight, great alignment. Let's save that and look at it one more time. And there we go. That's it. We created several components called all of those elements back into the design as instances. Then we built a simple prototype quickly by switching the state of the instances where we needed to. If you found this video helpful, please click subscribe. And if you're looking to grow as a designer, consider signing up for mentorship with me at newpragmatic.com. I'm Chris Courtney for New Pragmatic. Thanks for watching.